big dynamic of what Innova Technologies does is solely based on that transition. So NYSE has their matching engines not on the floor anymore, but actually in a data center in Mawa, New Jersey. And Direct Edge is in Secaucus, New Jersey. And NASDAQ is in Carteret, New Jersey. Aris is in 350 Cermak in Chicago. Uh, CME just moved the, all of their matching engines out to Aurora. So you have all these warehouses of servers and computers and the matching engines where the trades actually occur, but then how do you get to and from since there's no people? Well, that's exactly where we come in. Um, we build the connectivity that connects these various data centers. So traders, um, again, my, my folks before me uh, named a bunch of the big trading firms, probably you work for some, some of them as well, that trade between and within these different data centers and matching engines. So connectivity itself. You know, before we were picking up a phone and placing an order of a broker, now we go on to our trading platform via the internet, uh, and we do that you know, electronically itself. So capacity, um, how much data do I need to send from A to B, all right? Uh, this used to be you know, kilobits of information and it exploded into gigabits, tens of gigabits of information now. So orders of magnitude, more information going across these, these different sites, both in order flow as well as just market data itself, all right? Um, availability, if I can't access that site because my network is not available, my network's not working, that's probably a pretty, pretty big issue if I'm trying to put on a position or take it off. So it's very important that I have a functional network. And lastly, latency. You know, we were talking about or showed a picture of the, uh, the stilted shoes, if you will. Well, that's because if you have a great idea but you can't get it in, then it's pretty much worthless. So your ability to get that trade in and be first or be within a certain queue in order for it to be exercised properly is very important. And that's where this low latency concept came about. So, and that's a function of a couple things. One is the actual physical medium that this technology is riding over. We started with fiber optics. So think of a physical cable, all right, that has about the diameter of your hair, a piece of glass that a laser is shot over. And that's what a fiber optic cable is. So you have a laser going through glass from point A to point B. Um, and this is a, a rather new technology compared to some of the radio frequency technologies that we'll talk about a little bit later. Second is the path, all right? As a, as a crow flies from point A to point B, if I deviate from that path, obviously it takes a little bit more time to get there. So how straight is my path? How, is, how effective am I, am I from that perspective? And lastly is the actual technology itself. So, and that's gonna rely mostly on the type of equipment that you're using. How much time does it take that equipment to send that signal, okay? So we'll break this down and sort of step it up. Fiber optics, so capacity, and you know, I think he's been a little modest there in 10 gig, but literally you could run hundreds of gigabit of information across a single pair of fiber. It's, it's fantastic, and there's some more in-depth technologies that we could talk about at a different time. But think of fiber, think of a lot of information, almost a limitless amount of information. Along with that, it's, it's very reliable. You know, all of our big tel uh, telephone companies, uh, you know, the AT&Ts, the Verizons of the world, they use, uh, for, for their main transport, they use fiber optics because it stays up a lot. Literally, you have to go and cut the fiber for most, you know, for all sense of purposes for it to go down and not be available. So with that, it's very reliable, okay? Latency, it's the speed of light that propagates over that glass, which slows it down a little bit, okay? Um, and that's based upon just the components of the glass itself. And that's a physical const, uh, constant, can't change it at all, okay? And path, when I'm building a, say, a connection between Chicago and Aurora for my ICE to CME trade, well, I can't take as the crow flies type of a path. I have to follow different roadways, they call them rights of way, follow different ducts uh, that I could gain access to, all right? So it's not always the straightest path that, that you're able to use. All right, hence the A to B as shown there. So that's fiber. Then we transition into a, a wireless. So sending information over the air. We're used to wireless probably mostly with our cell phones. This is a line of sight, so a point to point type of deployment. And the first technology that was, actually it's an old technology, 40 to 50 years old, but of the last couple of years, it's been transformed and molded for the financial industry. That's microwave, okay? 
So a couple characters of a microwave. My bandwidth is not tens and hundreds of gigabits. It's 150 meg. So I have to be much more selective in how I use that bandwidth you know, per my trades. A um, couple other physical attributes. I could send microwave probably about 40 kilometers at its max. All right? Whereas a fiber optic signal, I could send an upwards of 100 kilometers before I have to take the signal, clean it up, and then retransmit. So it's a little bit shorter, but the, the benefit is, since I'm going over the air, I go directly from tower to tower. I don't have to worry about roadways or ducting or rights of way or any sort of necessary aspects like that. I have a very straight point-to-point -point type of network. So very, very more effective and efficient from a latency perspective on that, on that path. And then lastly, my, uh, my propagation delay, so my speed of that signal over the air is faster than fiber because the air doesn't slow that signal down as much as the glass of the fiber optics does. Okay. These originally were deployed in a long haul type of network. Think long haul as in Chicago to New Jersey. So 1,100 kilometers, hundreds of kilometers of, of types of networks where you would have towers that are spaced on through. Now, if I'm going through the cornfields of Indiana and I have a 10 foot dish, which most microwave dishes are about 10 feet in diameter, so a basketball hoop in diameter, probably not a lot of people care. But if I'm trying to hang a 10 foot diameter dish on a building in Chicago, Mm, that, uh, it's a little bit more visible. So it's much better for long haul, and there's some restrictions um, for permitting and construction basis in a metro type of environment. Okay. So how did we then evolve this into something that would be uh, feasible within the Chicagoland area, within the New Jersey area, to connect those closer data centers? Well, a different type of radio frequency technology came out called millimeter wave. Uh, millimeter wave gives you some benefits, but then it also has a, has a detractor, okay? Uh, so you get much more capacity relative to microwave on millimeter wave, all right? Order of magnitude more. Um, it, is, it is actually faster, so the technology itself doesn't slow down the signal as fast at each one of the you know, equipment hops or the regen sites. Uh, the detractor is I don't send it as far, so I need towers that are more of like 15 kilometers versus 40, so that's why it fits very nicely in the metro, you don't have as far as distances to go. And further to that, um, I, I'm, I'm able to, uh, my availability lacks a little bit uh, compared to a microwave type of deployment. So what does that mean? Since I'm sending data over the air, well, if I, I'm susceptible to different atmospheric conditions. You know, so if I have a rainstorm that comes on and it parks itself over Chicago and my network goes down, that's not too good for my clients. So there's, there's different aspects that you have to intertwine in there when you're actually deploying these types of networks and as you're, de as you're designing them, okay? Um, but the biggest benefit is I have a two-foot dish versus a 10-foot dish that I'm putting out there. So it's great to hang on a tower. Uh, it's great to hang on the side of a building and not nearly as visible as your 10-foot, as your 4,000-pound behemoth. Lastly, and you know, one, of the, one of the big things that attracted me to, to Innova Technologies was uh, a firm that ble uh, believed in, as Mike would probably say, self-disruption. So you have all these technologies, and these have really have progressed in a relatively short amount of time, last two years, from fiber optics to microwave to millimeter wave. And you know, as being an industry leader in, in that aspect, we come on out and we need to solve for certain issues. And that big issue was that availability. How do I get the networks running as fast as I can with the most bandwidth, but then have them uh, be able to uh, be resilient enough to stay up in all different weather uh, conditions. And that's actually spawned and solved by this new hybrid laser millimeter wave technology. And what, what we've done here is we've partnered with a firm, a joint venture, uh, that was a DOD contractor. Um, and for years, they developed optics and free space optics, so a laser that, would act, that was actually used to connect F-14 fighter jets as they are in, in combat and make sure they had communication links on up. So pretty cool, pretty nerdy stuff, if you will, right? Um, and what this box actually does is it gives you all of the benefits of a wireless technology, the speed, more bandwidth uh, within that realm to what you could push in that spectrum, but it also gives you the availability of a fiber optic deployment, all right? And of course, there's patents associated with that. Um, there's, there's also other aspects that 
my colleagues before me hit upon with the exchanges and, and all the different market structures that are coming on down the pipeline. So that's, that's essentially how uh, we have defined the next generation RF technologies. Now, how does this sort of work as a, in a aspect of, um, you know, in a real life aspect? So here's basically what a, what a simple point-to-point -point network would look like. And in there you have obviously three different technologies. You have FSO, which is your laser, okay? You have millimeter wave, which you talked about a little bit. That's, that's more of a classic RF type of deployment. And then you have the Anova A Optics, which is our joint venture partner, um, and that's that new box. So as you go and you hit different inclement weather, different technologies are affected and evidently drop. That's where that availability goes down. But with this hybrid technology, we're able to stay up in all these weather conditions uh, because of how it's engineered and how the different patents are working so the technology can uh, be more resilient through any sort of weather condition. And why is this important? Well, it's, it's important on many levels, but the main one is, and what the trading firms always, always sort of get to us as, is yes, I want to be fast. Yes, I want to be faster than somebody else. Yes, I want the, the stilted shoes so I can get my orders in. But if I can't then access the network because I need to get out of a out of a different position or I need to put something in to take advantage of that opportunity at the open or whenever it is because my network is down, then your network is almost rendered useless to me. So this was a solution at, that will absolutely change the game moving forward uh, from a, a pure technology standpoint. In summary, give you a little more of a, of a hardware type of, type of spin on things uh, and hopefully it outlined where uh, engineering and mathematics uh, has a very nice place in this marketplace and, and will continue to thrive uh, on the technology front. So appreciate your time. <laughs>